Greetings out there in YouTube land from the planet Earth. Uh, I do some home ministry in case some of you don't know, and I'm talking with this one gentleman here who doesn't really want to speak on camera right uh, here right now, right? Well, I, you know, I don't have the camera on. I need a shave. You got to bear with me. My wife just died June 26, okay? And I just really didn't feel like uh, shaving, you know, for a little bit because I was out to. I didn't have anybody to impress, you know. But uh, I don't let it bring me down because out of the body with the Lord. But I was talking about the vanity of Satan, right? An ego of Satan, because it's really dangerous for us, you know. And, and, and a lot of, sadly, a lot of the ministers out there that are on YouTube and all that, the people raise up on the, the platforms are in the same boat, you see. Because you got to remember, Satan earned his way up the ranks, right? And God promoted him because of the good works he was doing there for him, right? He earned his way to the very, very top. I mean, you can't get any higher than that. There's only two of them guarding the mercy seat, as I was telling my friend here. And the Holy Spirit was rocking me as a, as a minister. I, I do really much better. It doesn't matter if several people or whatever when they're there because, you know, you, the, the feedback and everything else. And I can, I'm really great at it. This is a new thing for me, right? But you think about this. Satan worked his way right to the very top. And when he's at the very top, I mean, after all the success, is when the ego and vanity and all that set in. And, and, and I'm Mr. High and Mighty and I'm all that in a bag of potato chips, you know? And he'd probably say, yeah, I'm throwing a pop too, right? Because his ego and vanity, he did not appreciate his good fortune and, and everything else, right? Well, a lot of these guys, they might start off humble and all that, but then success gets to their head, right? Just like Satan. And look what his story is going to be at the end, right? But we are we are actually living in the Bible, so we really are Bible characters. It's just the way you look at it, the perspective of things. You could be uh, a David, a Solomon, uh, you know, uh, you name them, right? You could be one. Because you got to write your own story, but then you could also be a Jezebel and the likes like that, you know? One of them priests of all, that didn't end well for them, did it? Oh, no, no. Elijah was there, just, and they're trying, and they're trying, they're cutting themselves, and they didn't do them any good. And all Elijah did say, hey, throw more water on there. Come on, throw more water on there. Because he was standing in his face, right? And God, you know, let him know what to do. But hey, come on, no, that's not wet enough. Throw more fire. And they're laughing at him. But all of a sudden, God set down that consuming fire, right? Whoa, you know? And it cost them their lives, right? Those who follow Satan, it's a dead-end story, right? He may tell you all kinds of lies. I mean, they even got communication companies using his name. Because Jesus is the morning star. So what do they do? They got bright star communication. That's the name of Satan. And there's a lot of the companies that name themselves after Satan. Now think about it. Satan controlling communication companies. The media. What you see, read, and hear. Controlled by Satan, of course. What else is new? That's how the beast is taken over. It's happening right around You are a living Bible character, and your story is still to be written. You're writing it right now. Are you going to be a Bible hero or a Bible zero? I say that, and some people don't understand, but you are a Bible character. because The Bible is still unfolding around you. Look at the vanity and ego of Satan. He worked his way and rightfully deserved the promotions, but when he got to the top, he got full of himself. You look at some of these ministers out there preaching right now. They get a large viewing audience, a large congregation. And they think they're all that in a bag of chips, too. And they probably tell you, throw in the pop, too. Just like Satan, right? Because they're so full of themselves. And they forget that they're only men. And they're only workers in the fields of the Lord. They're just a, they're supposed to be a shepherd taking care of God's flock, not their own. But what do they do? They fleece them every time you turn around, handing out the trade. Give me money, money, money. So I can go on these fancy vacations. And I can drive these fancy cars. And I can go to all these conferences. They're always spending time at conferences instead of ministering the word of the Lord like you want to do. Slapping each other in the back. Men are like, hey, have a dinner with us. You, know, you can get a dinner with us. Excuse me. You're just a somebody like me. Remember, God is no respecter of persons. He raises kings up and he crashes them down. Right? God can use anybody. Look at John in the wilderness. Right? Because I'm like him. I'm screaming from the wilderness, basically. Right? And I am a whisper in the winds because it's falling on deaf ears most of the time. Right? And that's what God is. He's, he's talking, but he's such a gentle whisper at times. not always loud audible. He's had to talk loud to me a few times. I'm being honest with you. For me to hear him, right? And because the other guy is whispering to you too, right? And he'll try to jump in there right away. But when God talks, to you, it, it's, he's patient and it doesn't rush when he's speaking and all that. The devil tries to rush you right away. So if you hear something like, oh yeah, really, really quick. And that's not a God, right? That's the devil, right? And I know some of you are out there experiencing because I wasn't the only one. Here I am being healed. I got two of them talking to me at the same time. And I go, whoa, I just got healed. Like, he had to throw his two cents in there, right? Trying to trick me and make me think it was Jesus, right? I had to step back. And I highly recommend to everybody, when you're confused a little bit like that, step back and chill with the Lord, right?
That's the only way to get your life right, brothers and sisters. Because he's going to try and mess with you. The closer you get to God, the more you want to get in God's path, he's going to try and interfere a bit. Oh, yes, he is. He's going to want to lead you astray again. Because he wants his flock bigger in hell just to hurt God. That's the whole point. Think of a spiteful child doing something to hurt somebody just to hurt them. There's no real good reason to do it. And you don't care about who others you hurt. You just want to hurt that one person. So you're going to do whatever it takes to hurt him. That's Satan's game to hurt God. Because he wants to be God, right? You know? I mean, it doesn't matter. He don't care that he's going to lose. He wants to take as many of you as he can with him to hurt God. Because God's going to know they're all in hell. Because many forget God knows the number of every hair on your head. He knows every facet of your life. He knows everything. Before you were even born, he knew your name. He knows the exact day you're going to die. He knows everything about you. And he loves you. And the fact that he might have to throw you in hell doesn't change that. But it's for the good of the body, the other children of his. You can't have that destructive, evil child around the good kids without them hurting the good kids. And, it, and if he, he allowed them into heaven, it would turn into hell 2.0. And he'd have to create another heaven and go, start all over again. Just not worth it. We are honestly lucky he didn't throw it in and say, screw it, I'm going to start a new world. You guys just aren't worth it. I mean, we could, we could have heard that and, and trembled in fear as he threw us into the lake of fire. Right? But God loves you so much, he didn't do that. But you got to remember not to let the ego and vanity get you, like many of these people. They're raised up on a pedestal, and even if they say something wrong, and you comment about it, and you can't. you got to hurt the people attacking How dare you say that about this, that, da, 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 da. And they're not paying attention to the things a person said wrong. Men do make mistakes, right? Straight word. Unintentionally sometimes, intentionally and otherwise. Because remember, Satan is a good scripture lawyer. He'll tell you some good verse and then twist it a bit to get his narrative out there. What did he tempt Jesus with in the desert? Scripture, right? Never argue with Satan about scripture, right? He'll twist it and manipulate it because he knows it better than most people alive right now, right? That's a danger. That's why you're supposed to tell him to get behind me, Satan, get lost, basically, right? In the mighty name of Jesus. And that only works if Jesus is flowing in your heart, brothers and sisters. You need to keep Jesus in your mind and your heart every day. That's called putting on the armor. you got to be armored up because Satan, he's freaking out. He knows his time is short. He's going to be cast down soon. That third temple's going up. Satan is, you know, shaking in his boots because he knows it's going to come. But he's going to go for that one last hurrah and take as many of you as he can with him to hell just to hurt God, right? Ego and vanity in action, brothers and sisters. He's so full of himself, he honestly thinks he can still win. Even though he knows the end of the story, he still thinks he's going to win. Now, that's not that bright, if you ask me. But, hey, I'll leave that up to you to figure out if he's bright enough or not, right? Because I don't think a bright man is going to wind up in a lake of fire, do you? Are you smart enough to figure out that that's not the place you want to be? If so, give Jesus a call. And remember, no matter how successful you may be in all things in your life or whatever, never let your head get full of it. If you don't want to, you want to know the bill for it, take a look at Satan and where he's going to end up. There's a high price to pay for the vanity of men. Take a look at your Ecclesiastes. I highly recommend it. Because many things are a vanity that people think are of value today. And there's so much good <clears throat> wisdom in the Bible. Crack one open today and give it a good read. Don't trust some hireling that may work for Satan to lead you to heaven. Because you're the only one that can do that. By calling on Jesus and doing as he says. Right? Study to show yourself approved to God. Right? It makes a real difference. Because the Bible is an introduction to Jesus. Right? And that's where the rest comes in. He, all God wanted is a personal relationship you, with you. God is about faith and a personal relationship. Not the name of buildings or religions, you know, or the titles men love to give each other. They pat each other on the back. In the old days, God picked his messengers. Today, oh, I'm going to do this for God. I'm going to do that for God. And it doesn't work. I've said before, I knew a guy that got several PhDs, theology, divinity, whatever. He was been training people for years. And just before his mother died, he got himself another PhD. And what did he do a little bit after? Gave it all up and became a life coach. Right? He did not have Jesus in his heart. Can you imagine how many priests, pastors, and whatever, because he taught them of all denominations, are out there right now teaching you the word that they learned from this guy who didn't even have Jesus in his heart. Sure explains a lot of false shepherds out there because they knew not the need of the word because they heard it from a guy who might as well have been reading Moby Dick, right? Because he didn't have it in his heart. Right? Think about that. If he knew what he was talking about, he'd still be working for Jesus, right? Don't let your ego and vanity get the better of you. There's a big price to pay for it. And Satan is a great example. He's going to burn in the lake of fire. So make sure you don't and don't get full of yourself. Remember, Jesus got down and washed the apostles' feet, right? Think about that. 
Those who want to be great in the kingdom of heaven are the servants of others. Something to think about. Bye-bye.